Okay, last but not least, we're going to talk to you about parachutes. Um, because for some of you, you do not want to just come flying through the atmosphere. You want to loiter, as I would call it, for a while. So you want to, to slow down and kind of hang out for a little bit. So we put out a, uh, it's not in the book as well. So what we did is we created a PowerPoint on it, Matt did, on sizing a parachute because that's probably what you'd end up doing. Uh, you might be able to float enough. You should first see if you can do it by buoyancy and the fact that you might be able to slow down for a while and do stuff. But if you really want a parachute, if you want to hang out in the atmosphere and, and see what all is going on, then you need to, to look at that, this presentation as well. Um, what you need to know basically about a parachute, it's the same as drag, except you're just going to make sure it all works out. So if you look at the presentation that Matt did, um, drag is drag. There, there's no difference in the equation. So for a parachute, the drag equation is still exactly the same. One half uh, rho, the density of the fluid you're in, times the velocity you're traveling at, times the drag coefficient, and then in this one it's A, or actually I call it S when I do it. So it's the area, right? And that's what you're really after, is the area that this parachute, how big does it need to be, right? And for most people, they're going to think about it as a circle, because it's just going to be some circular thing that pulls down and, and does things with you. So the way to do it really is to uh, make it equal the weight, right? Because that's going to give you probably the best case out of any of this is, is just to make it equal the weight of, the, of the, your payload. So if you do it that way, then the mass and g of the payload, right? So this is the mass of your payload and that's gravity at uh, Venus basically equals this drag force. So one half rho v squared c sub d a, right? And so you can figure this thing out pretty quickly. Um, you solve for a because that's what you're, you're after. You know everything. You know the mass. You know gravity. You know density. The one thing you don't know right now is this velocity. And we'll talk about that in a second. You know the drag coefficient and so you're wanting area, right? So area, according to Matt's charts, is 2 times the mass of gravity divided by, or the mass times gravity, times the drag coefficient times v squared times the density of the atmosphere. Okay? And so from there, assume a circle. It's the pretty one. It's the easy one to do, right? So that also equals pi over 4 d squared. And so from there you can solve and find d, because that's really what you're after, is the diameter. So the diameter of this parachute is the square root of 8 times the mass of the payload times the gravity associated with that planet divided by the drag coefficient times the velocity of it, density, pi, right? We just played some algebra tricks here and figured it out for you. So that's what we're really after, okay? So when you look at that equation, 8 is a number, duh, you got it. Mass, you better figure that out by now or you're screwed. G, done, right? Drag coefficient, you can get a number actually on slide five. Uh, Matt found out that a parachute is 0.75 and a parachute is 1.5. So you can pick whatever you want in there. Uh, parachute, 1.5, it's great. It's gonna drag you really hard. So that's perfect for you, right? So you got that. Uh, v, V, we don't know, because V is the basically the descent rate how slow you want to fall, right? And so that's going to be something you're going to pick. Density, done deal. Density of, you know, Venus, you got to pick a number, you know, go look on some websites and stuff like that. Pi is pi, right? It's pi. So what we really need to figure out is this V term. That's the big one. So what we, what we basically think we need to do here is we know, you guys know, that you want to fall a certain distance, right? So say... You're on the balloon, so you're at 55 kilometers, right? And you want to descend all the way to the surface, so that's zero, right, kilometers. Then you know from your power or your guesstimate that you want to fall for a time t, okay? Pick whatever it is. How quickly do you want to fall to the surface, right? So there is this distance d here, right? And so it could be 55 kilometers, it could be 5,000 kilometers, I don't care. It's this distance d, and you know you want to do it for a time, some time increment. You can pick it. 
So from there, velocity is distance over time. Ta-da! Right? So this V can plug into that one, and you can find out what the diameter of that parachute will be. Okay? And you can trade it off. So you can say, hey, what if we were five hours? We wanted to go 55 kilometers. Plug it in, figure out what your, your uh, thing would be. What if it's five billion hours? I don't know, whatever. Divided by 55, and you can figure out what your diameter would be. Obviously, the slower you want to go, the bigger your parachute's going to get. Right? Just common sense. So that's the kind of thing that you can do in this one. So it's pretty simple. Uh, I don't think there's a lot more to talk about with it. It's just you have to assume this part, and that's the biggest part for you guys, right? So the assumption is, what is your descent rate? How quickly do you want to fall? And that actually ties to your science measurement, right? So that's the big thing. If you want to loiter, as we call it in the military, where you're loitering over a target, so you want to stay there for a while, you need this to be very, very low. If you don't, if you're like, okay, cool, I'm fine, I can keep on going, so then you can make this higher. And so that will show you what to do with this parachute. Once you find its diameter, then you know a lot more about this parachute than you did before. So hopefully this will help you. Uh, if you got any questions, you know where to find us. Talk to you later. Bye.